What's up guys and welcome to the channel. It's Joanna here, founder and CEO of Subwell. Today I am back with another shoe comparison. This time I'm taking a look at two of my favorite workhorse daily trainers. One of them is a newer entrant into the space, which is the Audi Zero SL. And the other one is the standard bearer for this simple, no frills, high mileage workhorse shoe. And that is the Nike Pegasus. So I'm gonna be comparing these head to head, let you know the specs, the feel, the ride, the comfort, and which one of these is gonna be best for you. Let's get into it. Quick overview of these shoes. So these are both positioned by their brands as daily trainers, those shoes that can eat up the bulk of your mileage. That everyday running shoe that can be used for easy runs, long runs, can also pinch it if you need it for some faster work. Now the Audi Zero SL comes in at $120. It's got a stack height of 35 in the heel and 26 in the forefoot for a nine millimeter drop. Now it comes in at 8.0 ounces, which is pretty lightweight for the cat. Category. Now in the other corner here, we have the Nike Pegasus. This is the Peg 39, although the Peg 40 is extremely similar. It's just a minor upper update. And in this shoe, we're gonna see a 33 millimeter heel and a 23 millimeter forefoot for a 10 millimeter drop. So the Adidas is a few millimeters above this. And the Nike is also 130, so very similar in price, but $10 more expensive in the Nike. Nike is also 9.4 ounces, so a touch above the weight of the 8.0 ounce Audi Zero SL. All right, so first let's dive into the midsole foam. So this one is using a primary construction of Adidas's Light Strike foam. Now Light Strike is a standard EVA, which tends to be on the firmer side for running shoe foams. But the secret sauce here is up in the forefoot. There's also a puck or a disc of Light Strike Pro, which is a super critical TPEE foam, which is found in shoes like the Takumi Sen and the Adidas Pro 3. So that Light Strike Pro forefoot is gonna give it a faster ride. It's gonna be more responsive and a bit bouncy. Now, because it's using that standard Light Strike EVA, this midsole is a bit less flexible than some other daily trainers. You can see it's not going to give me much response when I try to bend and twist it. It's a bit of a firmer ride, especially out of the box. It's pretty firm, but it does tend to soften up as you get some more miles in it. Now, the Pegasus here is using Nike's React Foam. Nike is pretty shady when it comes to what's included in their foams, but this is likely a TPEE compound, though not a super critical one like we see with the Light Strike Pro in the forefoot here. The Nike Pegasus also has Zoom Air units in here. There's one up here in the forefoot. I don't particularly feel them out on the run, but they are there to add a little bit more structure and excitement to that midsole. Now, there's only a three millimeter stack height difference between the heels, but the Audi Zero SL has a more cushion feeling, I think because the foam is a bit firmer than we see in the React here. So that gives it a more elevated off the ground feel. Neither of these foams are particularly exceptional and we'll get into the ride more in the next section, but these are just really solid standard daily training foams. Neither of them are gonna be extremely exciting or bouncy, but they get the job done and they're comfortable enough at slower paces while also able to pick it up and respond to faster efforts. All right, now let's get into the ride of these two. So the Adidas Audi Zero SL right out of the box was an extremely firm shoe. It took probably 50 to 60 miles to break in, but once I got past that threshold, this EVA foam really softened up and now it's one of my favorite shoes in the rotation. It does have a more structured feeling to it where even though it is cushioned, it's not gonna feel super soft and it's not gonna feel flexible at all on the ride. So if you think about a shoe like the Pegasus here, and we do that same sort of bend test. This one is a much more flexible platform. And while this foam in the React isn't super soft, having that more flexible feel gives it a bit of a snappier sensation than we're gonna get in the Audi Zero SL. The Audi Zero SL has more of that protective muted type of ride, whereas the Nike has more of that snappy flexible ride. Another big difference of these two is that the Pegasus is gonna have a lot more ground feel than the Audi Zero SL. Again, there's only a three millimeter difference in stack height, but for some reason, this Pegasus, I think it's because that React foam is a bit softer, a bit squishier. It just lets in more of that ground contact feeling. It's not the most protective feeling ride. So if you're used to running in max cushion shoes, you might like the Audi Zero SL a bit more, even though it is firmer, it does have a more protected from the ground type of sensation, while the Nike makes you feel like you're right close to the ground. 
Now for me personally, I don't have any stability issues in either of these shoes. I am a neutral runner and these are neutral running shoes, but I haven't felt instability in either of them. I would say probably because the Audi Zero SL has a bit more of a structured feel. If you're looking for mild stability, the Audi Zero SL might be a slightly better choice. Although this is not gonna provide any type of prescriptive stability elements. All right, let's get into the upper. So both of these have relatively padded uppers. I'm gonna have to say that Nike is slightly more comfortable. You can see here, they look pretty similar padding wise, but the Nike is just a bit more plush in the upper. And then also the material that the Nike is using is more flexible and stretchy than we're seeing in the Audi Zero SL. The Audi Zero SL can feel a bit constraining, especially in that first mile or two, it feels a bit tight on foot. While the Pegasus feels really comfortable and it's not the widest shoe, but it does feel like there's more room in there for my toes to wiggle around. Now, these are both decently breathable materials. I haven't had any issues with my feet heating up too much in these. We're just coming out of the summer here and these were both really good options for summer running. If you're a wide footed runner, neither of these are gonna be the best option for you, but both of these have dedicated wide fitting lasts. So you can go get that Audi Zero SL wide or that Nike Pegasus wide and those will serve you well because these are relatively narrow fitting shoes. All right, next let's get into the outsole. Both of these have a really solid covering of outsole rubber. You see on the Audi Zero SL, there's a bit more of it. It's in a flatter application here, whereas the Nike Pegasus has more of a strategic rubber application. Now I ran in the Nike Pegasus this morning and it was pretty wet outside and this outsole rubber gripped the ground great. The Audi Zero SL is probably slightly worse when it comes to gripping the ground than the Nike Pegasus, just because if you look at the way the rubber is applied, the Nike has more texture to it, whereas the Audi Zero SL is just this flat pancake-like application. So this Nike is gonna give you a bit more grip over those wet surfaces. Now I have fewer miles on the Nike, but you can see on the Audi Zero SL here, this outsole rubber is holding up pretty well through the first 100 or so miles. I tend to wear pretty hard on this back heel area and we're getting none of that yet on the Audi Zero SL. It is a pretty thick application, which is nice. And then same thing here on the Nike as well. Pretty thick application. The Pegasus is known as one of the most durable shoes in the running industry. That's why I got that workhorse name applied to it. So if you're looking for a shoe that can handle high mileage of marathon training, then Nike Pegasus is a great choice. All right, in terms of who these are best for, the Audi Zero SL is gonna be good if you like a firmer ride, if you like a more cushioned ride. So while this is not gonna be that soft cushion ride like we see in a Gel Nimbus or we see in a Saucony Triumph, it's gonna have a bit more structure, similar to one of my favorite shoes, the Saucony Endorphin Shift 3. So if you're a bigger runner, a taller runner, you want a little bit more foam underfoot, but don't like a super squishy feeling, then the Audi Zero SL is a great choice. On the other hand, the Nike is a really good option if you're an efficient runner, if you like a more minimal feeling shoe even though this is heavier than the Audi Zero SL it feels a bit less on the foot than the Audi Zero SL because that foam just doesn't feel as substantial if you like feeling the ground more if you like a more flexible platform then the Nike Pegasus is going to be a good choice I actually compare this maybe to the New Balance Rebel V3 the foam isn't as bouncy but similar type of ride sensation where you can really feel the ground coming up through your foot in terms of use case these are both going to be very similar you could get by doing any sort of type of run you need to in these they can handle long runs they can handle interval training they can handle tempo runs while there are more specialized options in all of those categories these are really good for that all-rounder shoe that can do anything when you need it to. I will say the Pegasus is probably a bit better option for faster work for any 5K, 10K type of pace you wanna do than the Audi Zero SL just because it feels a bit more nimble on foot due to that flexible feeling platform. All right guys, so there you have it. That is the comparison of the Pegasus and the Audi Zero SL. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for liking and subscribing and I'll make sure to keep you up to date on the latest and greatest in the world of performance running.